Ball, first and 10 at the 12-yard line of the Seahawks. Sean goes right, has a cutback lane, and he does. He's across the 20, the 25, 30, 35, 40. Here he goes. Are they going to catch him? 40, 35, 30. Touchdown, Seahawks! 12, they're bringing the trophy home. Your Seahawks, Super Bowl 48 champion. Holy catfish! Baldwin's going to throw back to Russell. He's got it! Touchdown! Seahawks! Are you kidding me? Let's Hawk It Out with your hosts, Kevin Porter and Rich Harris. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Hawk It Out. I'm one of your hosts, Kevin Porter, along, as always, with Rich Harris. What's up, buddy? Welcome back to the show. All right. I'm glad to be here. Uh... Nothing, a whole lot going on other than um, what the subjects are today, really. Uh, glad to be a little bit past Christmas here and get through the New Year's and then start the New Year uh, on a good foot. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm kind of uh, ready to talk about uh, a loss. I don't really want to call it a tough loss or anything like that, but we'll have plenty to talk about. It was a, uh, a game that was within reach, I think, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, dude, we're we're a couple days late on this episode, but uh, given the circumstances of this last weekend being the holidays, you know, everybody's understanding in regards to us taking some time here to process, like you said, you know, this loss. Uh, your Seattle Seahawks, unfortunately, go down 10 to 24 against the Kansas City Chiefs on the road. Uh, Rich, what are your immediate uh, re- what was your immediate reaction after Saturday's loss? Uh, our offense just never really got started. We, we never got a spark going on the offense. Uh, the defense was there. They held up well. They kept us in the game. But really, we were just off balance. Um, again, if that if that offense would have had any sort of a spark or any sort of a, uh, a momentum rhythm. and started scoring some points, yeah, rhythm is a great word. Yeah. They just didn't they didn't get into a rhythm. They didn't get a spark going. And uh, every time the defense went out there and held up Kansas City a few times. We never capitalized. So that's my initial thoughts is uh, the offense just never got going. Well, we go into, uh, you know, this past Saturday. I mean, Geno Smith, he did go. He went 25 for 40 uh, through for 215 yards. Uh, he was averaging 5.4 uh, yards for, per uh, throw. Uh, he had the one touchdown, the one interception. He had a, sa- a couple sacks there for a total of uh, 15 yards lost. Uh, you know, his uh, average ranking was a 74.5. So, Comparing it to Patrick Mahomes, like you said, you know, they were able just to, you know, the, the, the Chiefs were able just to muster up enough in the in that cold, cold weather down there in Kansas City uh, to, you know, again, you know, allow their team to score and uh, get it done, which is obviously, you know, there's a difference between the Seattle Seahawks being 7-8 and and the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, you know, historically the last several years, you know, being one of the best teams in the NFL, you know, with a 12-3 and record. 6-1 and one at home, by the way, only losing once at, uh, you know, out there in Arrowhead. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't dis- I mean, I was disappointed that we lost, but at the same time, like it was kind of expected just based on the performance level. I mean, like, I don't know. I like to, like you said, uh, I'd like to see uh, our uh, offense do a lot more. I mean, again, if our offense was performing half as well as we were, you know, a month ago, we'd be scoring a little bit more points. At least we'd be a little bit more competitive because it's not like these games were out of reach at all the last several weeks, like the last month or whatever. It's like we've been in contention every single game, but it just unfortunately it just has has not gone our way in, in regards to our offense. Yeah, definitely, and it was definitely an uphill battle. We we knew that going into it. It was a tough team, a playoff caliber team, Super Bowl, Bowl caliber team, and uh, yeah, I mean that would be a great win to get if we could have got it. And I thought that we at least stayed within reach of them uh, earlier on. Uh, or showed the potential to be able to do so. Yeah. Um, but it didn't really, it just never really happened and developed. I mean, our run game got started there kind of in the second half a little bit. So they obviously went inside the locker room and made some adjustments. I think it was uh, K9 was quoted in, in his press conference as saying, uh, they just told him to, uh, I think he told him to slow down a little bit and, and then hit the hole or something. Or they told him, to, oh, they told him to just go downhill, just north and south. You know, just North wait, and south, yeah, baby. Just, just go for it. Just decide. Oh, that's what it was. Be decisive and go downhill, and uh, you know, trust your line. 
and uh, you started seeing him get through that line. And then once he gets through the line, you know, it, the race is on. So um, that started, but it, it just, again, it wasn't enough. Um, uh, even things like the Godwin's kick return we, he had, I think that was early on. He had a kick return for 48 yards, which was actually the longest one of the year for us. Of course, we still call him Godwin because we can't pronounce his last name quite yet, but we should get on that. We should really get on that it's out like of respect kick. for him because it's not that hard. We just well got, a bouquet or something like that. It's, it's like, like something three like syllables that. or something, I believe. And yeah. actually, we have every reason to get to know his last name better now because we just signed him from the practice squad. Well, so, I think he's, uh, he's, he has a spot, dude, for sure. He definitely yeah. has a spot right now. Yeah, they signed him from the practice squad, so he has a spot on the roster right now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we're looking at. It was, and then as far as the... Uh, uh, the other part you talked about with the uh, other games and stuff, we were all within one score of those, I believe. You yeah. know, they put up the stats and then watching the game there. So, yeah, they were definitely close and within reach, all of those previous five that you're talking about are four. And uh, that's the frustrating part is, you know, when the games are within reach and you just can't execute, you know, you, you, as a fan, you're just sitting there yelling at the TV going, ah. what the hell? You get something going. Like, come on. You're getting the ball again and another three and out. I think Coach said that they couldn't – they had trouble with third and tens all day. Um, they couldn't convert the third and tens. They couldn't convert third downs very well. And then, obviously, we couldn't hold them from uh, converting on their third downs. So, yeah, it was a momentum problem and a continuity, uh, you know, problem with the offense as far as the defense and the offense uh, being able to feed off each other and both contribute to a better game than what we had. I like to think that, you know, our defense has definitely been played a lot better the last month. I think if there's one shining thing coming out, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know how well you want to even describe it, I guess. But like, in my opinion, like, I feel like we've like we talk about, you know, each game, you know, has been within reach. And it's like because our defense comes out there and is able to play like, you know, two to three quarters of like really good football and like, you know, shut these shut these teams down. I mean, we saw it in Kansas City this last weekend. You know, we shut them down a, a handful of times, dude, to where, like, again, if our offense was, like, clicking and we were getting touchdowns, dude, we would have been up, like, on points, like, 100%. Yeah. All it it wouldn't have been a question. All we had to do like, was answer. Yep. It, and, yep. you know, so our defense has been playing pretty pretty well. It's just, you know, again, you need that offense because, again, you can't, you can't hold a Super Bowl caliber team like Kansas City Chiefs or, like, even, you know, San Francisco 49ers, man. Like, you know, shout out to, you know, their performance against our, you know, because they're going to score on you eventually. It's just going to happen. And you just got to be able to yeah. answer for, for the amount of times that you're given the chance to answer. You have to answer every single time you have to try because it's a, it's a shoot them out game every single week, dude. It's just, it's offense is going off, dude, and scoring points and the defenses will, they'll try their best every time, but you know, they're not going to, they're not going to win them every single, every single one. But um, I mean, I mean, even a field goal here and there. I don't know if you have the stats up in front of you for Michael Dixon, but I'm sure we punted a lot because I don't even remember very many field goal attempts. So, yeah, if we could have just answered here and there and uh, we could have stayed with them maybe. But could have, should have, would have. It didn't happen, and that's where it's at. But, yeah, speaking of that 49ers game, before I forget, uh, did you know we set a Guinness what record again for noise on that particular game? Did we really? I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, from what I heard, we they did, and they, there was a picture of Coach with them. Uh, but anyway, it was something that somebody else pointed out to me. I don't know if it was one of those where they just throw it up there and somebody's making up the news or not. So uh, let's look into that one a little bit closer because that's pretty damn cool, If and it would make sense on Thursday Night Football against a division rival with the NFC West uh, basically yeah. first place on the line because we were so – well, it wasn't uh, first place on the line at that point, but – you know what I'm saying? It's all bragging rights and everything. If else. we would have won, the, the, I mean, San Francisco did win the NFC West on our home turf. I mean, that should should make every single Seattle yeah. Seahawks fan angry as fuck. <laughs> exactly, like, uh, exactly. So, so we did our very best uh, from our perspective as the 12th man to shut them down and add our uh, dimension of the game to yep. it, and that wasn't enough either at that time. But y'all, you know, look at them; they're a great team. But yeah, back to back to this game uh, and where where we sit now. I think we're going to probably lead into that. Is uh, we what well, we got the Jets at home, and then we got the Rams at home. And uh, in my opinion, I think we just well we absolutely have to win out if we're going to have any sort of a chance. 
Yeah, dude. I mean, if we win out, dude, we, we get to that number. We get to that uh, magic number, 9 and 8, dude, just like we predicted at the beginning oh, of the, there you go. The, at the season there, dude. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we're on the bubble, dude. I mean, if you're looking at the playoff picture right now, I mean, you have you have uh, Washington Commanders, you know, at 7-7-1. Seven, seven and one. We're 7-8. and eight. So we're on the bubble. So if, like, Washington loses, you know, we have a tiebreaker with the Giants if we're able to, like, gain any sort of momentum. If they, if they continue to lose, I should say, if they lose out, and we win out, then we'd have the tiebreaker. Um, the Buccaneers are also in the hunt, dude. So, I mean, like, we're... I don't know. It's going to take a freaking miracle for us to even, I feel, to, like, make this happen, dude. But, I mean, we are playing the Jets. I, I'm just fully expecting, dude, like, looking into this coming Sunday, it's like, you know, playing the Jets. You know, they, they got their new quarter... or the, the I forget the dude's name. I didn't catch it. But whoever their new quarterback was that got hurt a couple weeks Mike ago. White. Mike White. Um, yeah, so he, yeah. yeah, he's coming back this Sunday. He's playing in Seattle in which, you know, the last couple weeks, dude, you know, I don't know, dude. I just, I hope that we can, I hope our offense can come in on Sunday, dude. And just like kick ass, dude, just well, straight up, just kick ass. I know where you were going with that is the last couple of weeks, these backups have all been playing better than the starters. Is what and you're they just come in to kick our ass, dude. Like the, the Carolina third, game. Like across the league, even. Yeah. I mean, across the league, even the third stringers are doing better. The, Las, the backups are Las doing Vegas better. Las Vegas came Look, in to kick put, our ass, you know, like shit. We'll, we'll get into Denver soon, but as soon as they put Russell Wilson back in the ball game, they they started losing again. So, right. I mean, these third, second, and third stringers, these backups are definitely playing better than the uh, other ones uh, for the most part. Um, but yeah, yeah man, dude. it's a log jam in there, isn't it? This is like a yeah. log jam. It's like a bunch of us are seven and eight. Uh, dude, there's uh, the Packers, you know, the Lions. We're one. all seven and eight, dude. But we have, yep, we have, we have the lead on it though. We're top, we're top on the bubble, dude. So if some uh, football it's god fun. magic wants to work on on the next two Sundays, you know, let it happen. I guess suppose. Let uh, it, let it come down in Seattle, ladies and gentlemen. We got the twelves for both of them, so that's a that's a plus right there. Always. Yeah, that was our last um, road game on on Saturday, dude. So we got two games at home. The Jets and the Rams we got to win out, and we need we need some other other stuff to go our way. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to yeah. be a big Browns and Colts fans this coming weekend, dude. You know, <laughs> that's those are the teams that we're going to be rooting for. Those are the games we're watching. Uh, I'm going to be looking out for the whole draft thing, like we've been talking about, uh, to see who's playing on those. If I can get any of those games, so we're talking about the other teams that are either losing to go stay where they are in the draft, like the Texans, right? They've kind of, I think they won last week. So the more they win, the better that we get closer to that first pick. Of mm -hmm. course, Denver's right there, uh, the Bears and the Cardinals. They're kind of right there with us in that top five. So with that said, the Texans have the Jaguars and the Colts. So I think those are both winnable games for the Texans. So hopefully they'll climb back away from one a little bit from there. Uh, Denver, they have the Chiefs and the Chargers. So Denver has probably two losses right there. I don't know if they're going to play Wilson, but they got a coachless team right now. They got a backup coach because their coach got fired. So, um, and then you got the Bears, which uh, they started, I think they're they're right there at number two right pick right now. Yeah, I think. they're 3-12 and 12 right now. Yeah, so we need them to win a little bit. And they've got the Lions and the Vikings. So, you know, both two tough teams right there. So... And then the Cardinals are right there close as well. And they play the, the Falcons and the 49ers. I think the cards are four and 11. Okay. But yeah, so that's kind of the picture I'm still watching really closely as well. Man, can you imagine if we get that first pick? And even if we don't get the very first one, we've got some capital. Like if we really wanted to get Bryce Young or somebody, if we really wanted to get that guy, that quarterback, if John Schneider feels that great about him, he'd be there for the taking and we got some capital to hand around if we need to and we want to try to get that future guy whether yeah, it's Seattle, him or, Seattle's yeah. in a pretty uh a pretty good position when it comes to our draft picks right now they've uh they've really gone out there and made some shit happen you know that Russell Wilson trade dude I think it may go down in history as one of the worst trades in all time in terms of the you know the quarterback going to the to the alternate team there dude so time will tell time will tell Rich Harris Yep, I think it already is because uh, really it's going to, the, the year is almost at an end. There's no recovery for him on this particular year. So once you put a year in the books, yeah, that can create history and that can limit. Unfortunately, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, I still like Russell Wilson from when he was here. I always will uh, for his era in Seattle. And this really hinders uh, 
his ability to head forward to the Hall of Fame and stuff like that, I think. So unless he just has a really good bounce back, they said a lot of uh, greats had uh, off years. So we'll see if that's the case for him. I'm not saying I'm rooting for him or Denver by all means, because we have their picks next year as well. So it'll be the same uh, sideshow that we'll have next year. <laughs> we'll, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be well, rooting against two, Denver. Part two right? next year. Yeah. We get the bumper sticker and say, I only root for two teams, the Seahawks and whoever's playing Denver. <laughs> <laughs> that's good shit dude that is uh definitely some good shit there so i don't know man i'm, I'm just uh you know i know we're looking at we're looking at it at both ends dude because it, it's pretty exciting how the fact that you know we have we have we have rooting interest to uh you know get a top pick within the nfl draft next year but also at the same time dude we're still in contention to make the possible playoffs because we're on the bubble dude and like shit may happen may go our yeah. way and we may end up in there but you know We'll see what happens, dude. Maybe, maybe we just like it's, it's a switch, dude. You know, Gino will come back, dude. He'll be like, oh, you know, we're gonna play. We're gonna play at a Pro Bowl level each and every week. You know, it's Championship Week every every single week, Rich. It's Championship Week, so we gotta treat this coming Sunday against the Jets as a championship game, dude. So it's a must win. Exactly, exactly. And let's go get that win at home, and uh, then we'll have more conversation on how that pitcher is developing on that bubble that we're speaking of. It'll be a lot more clear seeing who else uh who lost as compared to uh us yep. and with the win that i'm really hoping that we're getting there so it is, that's dude. about all i got there it is rich all right man well <laughs> i guess my final words are uh yeah man championship week and uh go hawks dude all right i'm kevin porter for rich harris we'll see you guys next week peace all right can you win a game in the first quarter no can you win a game in the second quarter no, no!